So a typical processing pipeline con uh, uh, contains several steps that goes from the raw outputs of your sequencing machine all the way to your variants ready for analysis. The first step that we need to do is actually map your reads to a reference. Um, and so the first couple of steps are actually not part of the JTK by itself, but it, they're, they're part of uh, the typical processing workflow. So the, the first step once you have your raw reads is to figure out what part of the genome they came from. Now, there were several methods, several algorithms to do this. Broadly speaking, we can divide uh, uh, the, the uh, approaches that we take for this step into, into two. Uh, uh, assembly uh, approaches and mapping approaches. We, don't, we won't cover assembly, global assembly approaches in, 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 in this uh, session uh, because it's not really part of our, uh, of, of our processing pipeline, at least right now. Um, so for mapping, uh, the, the mapping approach consists of, first of all, having a reference genome. A reference genome, uh, a high, high quality reference genome can be typically, for example, you know, in the human case, uh, you know, B37 or for Chimps Pantro 2 or, you know, all of these uh, uh, big assemblies that, uh, uh, um, you know, consortia and other organizations have painstakingly assembled uh, and, and, and compiled through, through the years, and it takes just a form as a plain FASTA file. So once you have your reference genome and you have, like, all of these enormous pile of reads that your uh, sequencing machine produced, the challenge is to figure out what part of the uh, reference genome they came from. So this is what we refer to as mapping. Um, we, uh, here at the Broad, we typically use BWA uh, for mapping, although there are other algorithms out there. Um, uh, and, and BWA takes this raw pile of reads and figures out where, where from uh, uh, the, the genome they came from. Um, the second step that we're gonna uh, uh, do is actually uh, something called marking duplicates, which I'm gonna describe later. So let's take a look at first what happens with WA and how, how we map reads uh, to the reference. Now, in principle, you know, if things were ideal and everything worked very well, this should be straightforward, right? I mean, like, uh, you, you can imagine, like, you know, a long string, which is a reference, and then, you know, you, you have, like, some random piece of it, and then, you know, it should be actually straightforward to actually figure out where that came from. However, that's not the case. And it's actually, uh, it actually turns out to be a very hard problem, uh, a very hard algorithmic problem that people have invested a lot of time looking into. And this is actually something that, uh, that, that people are still developing and still improving. And um, the, the, the problem is that uh, uh, genomes are, are complicated structures that have like a lot of repetitions, a lot of, uh, you know, through evolutionary history, they acquired a lot of uh, like these similar structures uh, um, throughout. So it's, it's actually very hard to figure out uniquely where, you know, in which region a particular read came from. So, but there are algorithms that we won't get into actually to figure out, figure this out very quickly. So you can, you can actually just take, um, uh, as a basic idea that we have an input of reads, you know, which take form, uh, take a form as a FASTQ file. We're gonna run BWA as an, and as an output, we're gonna have mapped reads. So along with each read, we're gonna have a descriptor of actually where the read is actually coming from. So it takes a position, uh, it, it uh, this descriptor takes a, a, a contig or a chromosome, it takes a particular position, and then it takes what we call a cigar string, which uh, tells you pretty much how is the read aligned to the reference. So in this particular position, for example, if the reference is CCATACTGA, and your read is this string down here, you're, you're gonna see that the best alignment that uh, BWA or the, the particular mapping algorithm that you, you used uh, the, the best alignment that it could find was actually something that mapped starting from position two, and then it, it uh, created a deletion here, so it opened a gap here in your read, and then it figured out that there was an insertion, an inserted base here. So your cigar string, which is what is recorded in the BAM file, is something like 3M, because you have three matches, then one deletion, two matches, and one insertion, and then another match. So this is the description of how one particular read is going to align to your reference. And you're gonna have these descriptors pretty much for each single read that you have. Now, um, along with this descriptor of actually where your read is mapping to, you're gonna have some additional information, like for example, 
the mapping quality. So the mapping quality is just a number that tells you how likely is actually that your read came from the position that you are assigning it to. So if you have a highly unique, you know, non-repetitive position in your genome, um, and you can unambiguously place a particular read in there, you're going to have a very good mapping quality, and this is going to be reflected in, in your results of the alignment. However, uh, you can imagine, and this is actually, you know, th this can be quite common uh, in, in certain regions of the genome, that you have a very highly repetitive region, uh, you know, one of these like long satellite repeats like in the centromeres or, or you know, th th things like that, where one particular read could have come from, uh, you know, several positions in the, in, in the genome. So, he, you know, this region 2A and region 2B kind, you know, could be very similar or could be identical. So if you just look at a single read, you cannot really figure out, you cannot determine whether the read came from here or from here. So in that case, you really don't want to use the read for, uh, for variant calling, for example, because you, 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 uh, you might actually be introducing artifacts in your data. So in, in this case, uh, uh, BWA might assign a very low mapping quality to a particular read, and then you would actually essentially ignore these reads when you do your variant calling. Now, in a practical situation, what does this look like? Well, if you take, for example, the, you know, uh, uh, the sort of the typical versions of BWA that we take into production, we, uh, we actually have to run two steps of uh, uh, BWA. The first one is called BWA aligned, which just takes your FASTQ, which are your reads, your, it takes your reference, and then it creates an SAI file, which is a, a, a suffix tree file, which we won't get into the details here. But essentially, you, you run it either once or twice if you have pertinent data, and then you run the second step, which is called BWA SAM PE, uh, and the PE stands for parent end data. If you had single ended data, it would be SAM SE uh, with your reference, your reads, and the, the suffix tree files, and then you would create a SAM file. Now, a SAM file is essentially the same thing as a BAM file. The only difference is that a SAM file is plain text uncompressed, a BAM file is, is compressed, but you, know, you can go back and forth with that. And, you know, obviously, this is a very simplified version of what the command lines would look like, and um, uh, you know, you can you can tune the parameters of BWA in in many many ways, which falls. I mean, this falls outside of the scope of this course. Uh, depending on the kind of data that you have, you might want to be more permissive. You, uh, depending on your data, uh, you might want to be less uh, less permissive or more stringent. You can actually specify for example, a, n a number of gaps that you may want to uh, 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 allow in your data. So there are many, many options here that you can look into in, into the uh, BWA manual. And in the end, you're going to have your first very raw, very preliminary BAM file or SAM file. Um, actually, that has your reads aligning to, uh, uh, to your particular reference that you're using. Now, once you have that, the, uh, the, 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 the next step, the next big algorithmic step that you want to do with your reads is actually some, doing something uh, called uh, marking duplicates. Now, it happens in real current second generation sequencing when you have PCR amplification that occasionally you might be sequencing several times the same uh, original read that actually got, or the same genomic fragment that you had and then you just got, got duplicated when, when you ampli amplified your library, and then uh, essentially you're seeing the same data several times. And this happens more often with certain libraries when, you come in, when, when you're actually sequencing up to saturation on, on, on a library, you may not be actually gaining new information, but you're just sequencing the same thing over and over again, and this is bad. Why is this bad? Well, imagine that one particular read had a mismatch at some position in the reference. Now, if you sequence that same read several times, you might get confused and you might think that there, are, there were actually many reads supporting this particular mismatch, and this particular mismatch uh, may be then confused by, uh, as, by uh, as, as essentially some real SNP or some real genomic variation. So this actually tends to create, if, if you don't actually mark duplicates, that this tends to create false positives 
in your data, especially when, when you have like libraries close to saturation and your duplicate rate is high. So what this uh, mark duplicates step does is essentially it looks for reads that have you know that that look looks like this. That, that look like this. It marks. It chooses essentially one of them, the best of them, and it it will mark the others as duplicates. So it's by default not going to remove it from the BAM. So you will still have that data in the BAM if you, you choose to do some further analysis with it. But in in a special flag, they're going to be marked saying this read is a duplicate. Be aware of that. And then the GATK by default is going to filter out those reads, and then it's just going to see essentially one particular uh, read, um, which is the best description of the data. Now, I'm sorry? Why don't you duplicate all read lines in the same the sequence? Well, the, 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 the thing is that the algorithms, in order for the algorithms to actually detect the duplicates, they're going to rely in actually re, uh, uh, looking at the start and the end positions of the reads, and you need the alignment to, to get that information. So, so basically what, what it's going to look for is in your aligned reads, it's going to look for reads that have essentially the same alignment, so the same start, the same stop, the same gap information, and it, it's essentially going to look at, for, for example, at these reads, and it's going to say, you know what, these reads are just identical copies of the same underlying fragment. It's an optimization here, though, right? So yeah. Right. Yeah. And. The, you know, depending on your sequencing technology, you may do things uh, to, to actually detect some, some kind of duplication without looking at the, uh, at the alignment. So in principle, you could do that before, uh, um, you, you know, before alignment. Like, for example, if, if you want to detect an optical duplicate, you may actually uh, look at, like, neighboring information in your tile, in, 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 in your Illumina sequencing uh, runs. But that's actually kind of complicated, and this is actually much simpler. Um, so, you know, a very simple uh, approach is actually to just compare all of these reads that start with, uh, you know, that essentially have the same alignment, um, the, you know, the same mapping and the same alignment, and then just uh, uh, actually mark all of them except one for them as duplicates. So, this is a Picard tool that, uh, that is part of the uh, same part of the pipeline. And it's actually very easy to use, and I'm, I'm going to show you uh, a typical command line later. However, there's actually um, one important thing that people should be aware of uh, in terms of uh, sorting BAMs and the read groups. And the thing is this, like by default, when you align to a reference, for example, when you run BWA, BWA is going to output your aligned reads in the same order as your input fast queue. So it's not going to sort for you by default. So if you have a fast queue, and by default, fast queues, which are just like read records, they're ordered uh, may, uh, uh, like you know, alphabetically by the read name, your, your SAM file is going to have essentially the same ordering. Now, it's actually not convenient to have such an ordering. The more convenient ordering for all of the downstream processing is actually uh, uh, have it uh, have your BAM file to be sorted by the start position of your reads in the reference. So, you know, if, if for example, your data looks like this, where you have like, you know, a pile of reads aligning to this part of the region, and then a pile of reads aligning to this part of the region, you, you know, you essentially you might start with some jumbled random ordering or some ordering based on the name of the reads, but what you really want to have is, you know, the reads that come before in the genomic in a particular genomic position, you want to also come before in a in, in 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 your BAM file so that the tools have an easier way to access them and, and to process them. So um, a, a way to actually uh, do this is actually uh, uh, to run a, a Picard tool or there's also a SAM tools version of it called uh, Sort SAM, and we're actually uh, that that's also an integral part of the pipeline. And we actually may want to, actually, we, we want to assign read groups for each of the reads 
so that the GTK will know what reads belongs to what sample. And as Ryan was mentioning at the beginning, if you remember that the header of the, BAM, of the BAM file had all of these very important tags saying which read group uh, corresponding to which sample, this actually is where you actually tell the, uh, the, uh, the BAM file exactly the, 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 this information. So how does the, this uh, typical, typically work? Well, once you have your original SAM, you want to sort it, you know, the, the, this is actually a, a, a Picard tool sort SAM uh, where you just specify like your input, your output, and, and, and that you want it sorted by coordinate. Then you, um, you actually mark the duplicates and then you, want, then you add or replace the read groups to add this information. Now, the ordering of these steps, mark duplicates has to be after sort SAM, but add or replace group read groups, you can do it pretty much anywhere you want, and, and it's going to be equivalent. Um, any questions so far? Yes? How do you feel about the duplicate for single entries? It, it, it works. I mean, like, um, you know, you can do it either way. Uh, um, but does, it, does the duplicate use the position of both mates pairs to determine whether or not it's duplicate? I'm not actually sure if Picard does that by mates or, or in, by individual reads. But, but, you know, it, it works either way. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, typically you assign one read group to each lane, and and then yeah, one sample can have like many read groups, or the other way around. I mean, like if you do this uh, multiplexed, you know, indexed or barcoded experiments, you know, one single lane could correspond to different samples, as long as you can like you know split them later on. Any other? Questions? No? Okay. Um, so this is where we are right now, just to conclude. Um, remember that we had as an input our reference genome. We have our pile of reads, you know, raw reads coming from the machine, uh, typically in a FASTQ format. And what did we achieve with these uh, uh, two big steps? Well, first of all, we mapped the reads to the reference. So we figured out where in the reference these reads were most likely coming from for each of the reads, and then we marked the duplicates with Picard. And we, we did the sorting and, and adding the read group. So those steps are actually the steps that allow you to have like this sort of first step at a usable BAM file that you can actually do cool stuff with, which is uh, what we're gonna do uh, in, in a little bit. Any other questions? <laughs>